Up to now, we have studied default constructor and parameterized constructor. And you might be having this question in mind, whether is it possible to define multiple constructors within a class or not? We will try to answer this question in this lecture. The name of this lecture is Constructor Overloading. So, without any further delay, let's get started with this lecture and let's see what are the topics. The only topic of this lecture is constructor overloading. So, let's proceed further and let's understand what is constructor overloading. Just like function overloading, it is possible to define multiple constructors in the same class with different set of parameters. Because we know constructor is just like a function. As we can do function overloading in C++, we can also do constructor overloading. This means we can overload constructors, that is we can define multiple constructors in the same class, but the condition is that they must have different set of parameters. Also, compiler decides which constructor to call based on the arguments. Based on the arguments we pass via the object, a specific constructor will be called and this is decided by the compiler. And it helps in flexible object initialization. If we can define multiple constructors within a class, then we would be able to initialize objects in different ways. Therefore, it leads to flexible object initialization. Now, let's properly understand how we can overload constructors in C++ with the help of a C++ program. Here is the program. I have defined the class student with private members, role number and name. And these are public member functions. Here you can observe we have the default constructor. And through this default constructor, we are providing default values to roll number and name. Roll number will receive 0 and name will receive this string unknown. Now here is the parameterized constructor because this constructor has parameters. Here we have parameters R and N and through these parameters we are providing values to roll number and name. After this we have the display function which allows us to display roll number and name on the screen. Inside the main function, I have defined the object S1 of class student. I have only defined this object. I have not initialized this object. Therefore, the default constructor will be called. This makes sense too. And therefore, roll number will receive 0 and name will receive this string unknown. And these values are associated to S1 object. Therefore, if we call the display function through the S1 object, we will see the output as roll number 0 and name unknown. After this, I have defined this object S2 of class student. I have not only defined this object, I have also initialized this object. This is what you can observe. This is the direct initialization we have learned in the last lecture. Here, I am providing these values to these parameters. This is because the parameterized constructor will be called and these parameters will receive these arguments and these values are indirectly passed to roll number and name. So, when we call the display function through the S2 object, we will receive the output as roll number 101 and name Alice. So, we know when we execute this program, we will get this output Role number 0, name unknown. Role number 101, name Alice. So, through this program, we can understand that it is possible to overload constructors. That is, we can define multiple constructors with different set of parameters. With this, we have understood constructor overloading. This means we are done with the topic of constructor overloading. And this means we are done with this lecture as well. Okay friends, this is it for now. Thank you for watching this lecture. I will see you in the next one.